I'm reviewing the Vater 12V 100A battery. This one has Bluetooth monitoring and a self-heating function for cold weather. I will do a capacity test, draw a high current, check its protections and at the end I will open it up to see what's inside. Let's get started. Here's the battery, a standard 12V 100A case. It seems a bit large to me compared to my 280Ah cells, but we will see when I open it up. The terminals are M8 bolts, like any other batteries. I wish they would send some longer bolts as well, because if you stack 3 lux on each other, it's not long enough. But that's a common issue with many batteries. To use the app, you don't need to register, which is nice to see. Once you're connected, you can click on the dashboard. And here you can see the individual cell voltages, the voltage difference, and the temperatures. An improvement they could make is adding a remaining runtime counter and an option to adjust the parameters. I ran a capacity test at a discharge rate of 0.2C. That's about 20 amps for a 100 amp hour battery. And the result was 1352 watt hours, or 105.6 amp hours. And that falls within the expectations for new grade A cells. Let's test the surge capability of the battery. It's at a maximum of 100 amps discharge. But let's test it with a 160 amp load and see how long the battery will support it. And we have an overcurrent discharge warning. So that took about 10 seconds before the battery shut down. And it takes around 30 seconds to recover automatically. Personally, I think this is a good thing, because it's good for inrush currents for things like motors or compressors. Will Prowse recently made a video about some smart Bluetooth batteries that didn't share the current equally when they're both charged to 100%. So I will test it by adding another battery in parallel and I charged both batteries to 100% as you can see in the app. Now I will apply a 20 amp load and see if both batteries deliver 10 amps each. Let's first check the current coming from this battery. And we have 12 amps. And the father battery is delivering 8 amps. So there's a slight imbalance, but this battery still delivers current, as you can see in the app as well. So that's reassuring. Imagine you accidentally set your charger to 24 volts instead of 12 volts. Normally, the BMS should stop charging if one of the cells reaches 3.65 volts. But on this battery, the BMS allows charging up to 3.75 volts per cell with a 2 second delay or a total pack voltage of 15 volts. That's too high because the maximum voltage for lithium iron phosphate cells is 3.65 volts. Let me show you what happens when I charge at a higher voltage. We are now at 3.6 volts, 3.65 volts, and this is where the BMS would cut off. And now we reach 3.75 volts, and the BMS tripped with a pack over voltage, and the charging MOSFET has been disabled. So that's not a good thing to see. However, after a minute, the voltage settles back down to 3.6 volts. So I emailed the company and asked 
why they programmed it like this. Their answer was, it's designed that way, so at high current charging, the battery still reaches 100%. But here's the problem. From 14.6 to 15 volts, the capacity you gain is almost nothing, because you're at the end of the charge curve. And when charging at a low current, as shown previously, you can clearly see the cells are climbing to 3.75 volts. That's well past the safe limit. So how do we fix this? I connected the BMS with the Overkill Solar app. I had to delete the existing Farther app first before the BMS showed up. Then I searched for the cell overvoltage setting and changed it from 3.75 volts to 3.65 volts. However, your charger or MPPT charge controller will normally charge at 14.6 volts or even lower like the Victron which is set to 14.2 volts. With my standard 20 amp charger I didn't have a problem because it didn't reach 3.75 volts. However, the BMS is the last line of defense, so I want it set correctly, and that's why I made this adjustment. Let's remove the top of the battery and see what's inside. It's going to be my first time opening up a battery, so let's see how it goes. So let's now open it up and see what's inside. We can see they are glued here at the terminals for vibration and they have cable sleeves. A foam block pushing down against the top. And the cable is 6 gauge. Let's break down the pack even further. There's quite some empty space on the sides and I think it would be better for them to add some insulation in it because it's a battery used for cold weather. So I went ham and the case didn't survive but what we're left with is this an encased battery. So let's open this up now. The build quality is so good, it's almost criminal. And we have fiberboard. Here we can see the BMS and the heating pad. I will take a look if it's everywhere. It's a 100 amp BMS and I think it's a JBD BMS. We have the heating pads on this side and on this side. There are no heating pads on the bottom. Overall, I'm very impressed with the build quality. The BMS is separated from the cells with a, another fiber board. We have some cable channels here. They use uh, nylon washers. 
and the balance leads are glued down. The cables for the heating pads are nicely tucked away. And a temperature sensor is located on the battery cells. Let me test the uh, temperature sensor next. Let's test the high temperature battery protection. We will turn on a 10 amp load. And when I heat the temperature sensor, it should stop. And we are at 90 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And the discharge is turned off because of high temperature discharging protection. So that's good. Let's check if the low temperature charging protection works. Now we got 10 amps into the battery. When the temperature drops, the current will drop as well. But the current will be diverted to the heating pads. As we can see, we are now drawing 6 amp into the heating pads because each heating pad is 3 amps. And I can already feel them getting warm. And now when I release this bag, the temperature will rise again. And the current just went up again. So that's working perfectly. The heating pads only work when the battery is getting charged and if the current is above 10 amps per battery. In all other cases, the heating pads will not work. In normal conditions, these batteries work perfectly, both in series and parallel. But things can change in cold weather. When they are frozen and you try to charge them, each battery needs about 10 amps and 12 volts for a total of 120 watts in order to start the heating process. So if you wire multiple of these batteries in series or parallel, you need to make sure they have the right amount of power. So if you have two batteries in series, that's a total power of 240 watts and 10 amps. That's because it's in 24 volt configuration. And in a parallel setup, your charge controller or charger needs to put out 20 amps at 12 volts for a total of 240 watts. So each battery receives 120 watts. You can still discharge the batteries while they're frozen, but this is only for charging the batteries. Here are the pros and cons of this battery. The capacity test pulled 105 amp hours, that's 5% more than advertised. It can handle surge currents of 150 amps. The Bluetooth app is handy for monitoring. And the heating function makes it usable in cold climates. And the internal workmanship is great, one of the best I've seen. And here are the cons. There's a lot of empty space inside the box. They could add some insulation, because this battery is going to get used in cold environments. The overvoltage protection is set to 3.75 volts per cell. That's too high. You can change this in the Overkill Solar app. But it should have been programmed right the first time. Overall, the build quality is good. I do recommend it as a heated battery. However, the company should reduce the size of the box or add insulation. The overall voltage protection needs to be programmed to cut off at 3.65 volts. If you found this review helpful, please give it a like. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.